If we look through the market, we can see a lot of bad news. In the past trading session, US business activity contracts for the fourth month or to shrink. Housing market hits the brakes as US prices fall most since 2009. Home builders orders plunge 65% and Canadian markets deep freeze. Microsoft beats but cloud growth comes in short. Alphabet, the parent company of Google, misses on top and bottom lines as YouTube ad revenue drops in the quarter. Wall Street bankers see darker economic outlook, political risks as well. Oil prices rise on weaker dollars and supply worries. Oil investors on defensive as recession forces intensify. Singapore core inflation gathers speed to fresh 14-year high. The world is in its first truly global energy crisis. So how did the markets react? We can see the crypto market said, hmm, I'm going up. What about the stock market? It went up as well. It rallied. And we can see when we look across stock markets across the globe, they did rather well. In fact, literally every sector went up in the past trading session. So you would be right to say, what happened? In this episode, I'm going to explain what actually happened and how you can keep your eyes on things to be prepared. Stay tuned. It's going to be fantastic. Hi, family. I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome. And welcome back, KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 4.1% to 2011.9. Ethereum is up 9.04% to 1466. As crypto technical analysts, we're always prepared for whatever way the market goes. And the first thing we do is to mark up our charts with the CTKS method. We also keep a very close eye on checking world events, collecting probabilities, and it's that which moved the markets yesterday. I mentioned yesterday that we needed to be careful because we were at an absolute pivotal critical time. If we retrace down from here, that could have caused a lot of pain. However, what did we do? We actually took out this lower resistance level and this is the S&P 500 and we know that Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. So we've seen the S&P 500 break over that level of resistance and now it has to contend with this level of resistance. It needs to get over this as well. The first thing that happened the S&P 500 got over initial resistance, but what caused that? Masterclass students, you get my live chart in TM6. We saw fear come down, but why did fear come down? The markets rallied, but why did the markets rally? Bond prices came up and yields fell, but why did that occur? And we saw a bit of an uptick in gold. We saw oil starting to stabilize and junk bonds registering more capacity to take on risk. So what actually happened? The dollar, the DXY, it dropped. I've been saying for a long time now, keep your eye on the DXY. We saw the DXY kind of slightly under a resistance level, but it wasn't definitive yesterday. It is absolutely definitive now. So what do we expect? Do we expect that the DXY will just fall off a cliff and just go straight down? Retail investors would think that. Professionals don't think like that at all. When we get a crossing of a resistance line, we often have a retest of that resistance and a resumption down. In other words, we wouldn't be shocked at all if the DXY rose causing all of these things to inverse what happened in the last trading session and then confirm the resistance. And we can see there's dual levels of resistance floating out here and actually resume down. So you must keep your eye on the DXY. Why do we look at the stock market? Because Bitcoin and therefore crypto cannot escape the stock market's gravity. We had an illustration in the last trading session of what happens when rule 225 goes our way. It can upset everything and that's a kind of a nice thing to happen actually. That's why every day we do our Borsog code and this is deeply explained in episode 685. 
we say, for example, what do we feel the market is going to do? Do we feel it's going to go down, go neutral or go up? And that's the first part of the code. What about the second part of the code? This is all about our portfolio. How do we think it's going to move? And the third part of the code, how synchronized or not do we feel with the market? If we're in sync, we can predict much, much better what's going to happen with the market. But the market always tries to desynchronize you. It's just its way. And why do we look at down first? Most people, when they start investing, they go long. So they look at the upside. Look at the upside last. Look at down first and look at neutral second. This will actually speed your path to professional investing and trading. We can see just how important the S&P 500 is to crypto. And what we can see here, the S&P 500 broke a key level of support and it rallied through two levels to up to another one. And it's actually taken out previous resistance. This is a fantastic thing to see in the market. But do we expect it to just rally from here. And remember, these are Stanfield levels. These are not price levels based on recent price action. These are levels based on all of price action. And you can learn this in the CTKS Masterclass. What do we see happening with the S&P 500 futures? After this big push up, we can see price is now falling back. We need to look at the DXY. We're going to have a look at daily levels, daily Stanfield levels on the DXY. What you'll notice is that we've come into two very strong levels of support. Admittedly, the DXY is underneath that. But if you look at the momentum of price coming down, for example, when the DXY was up around the 114 level, it spiked down to literally 110. But these very, very firm levels, these buy institutional buy levels, actually reattracted that up and flinged it back up. A technical term. The concept is that you can see big drawdowns and big rises. Just be careful, especially if we're coming into well supported institutional levels. So what we're actually expecting is the DXY to firm up a little. I wouldn't anticipate it could drop down to the 110. I believe it will arc back into this 111 area and then it could resume down into the 110. But always have your three dimensional thinking playing at all times. What happens if indeed the DXY just collapses down and it does so dramatically? That will be fantastic for the stock market and for crypto. They will rally absolutely. But what if the DXY goes flat and consolidates? We would expect the markets to flatten out, to find a position that they're not sure if things are going up or down. But if the dollar comes back up, what do we expect? The markets will get a lot of negative pressure and sell down, both the stock market and the crypto market. Let's go into the Stanfield levels on the one hour. We can see this much, much more clearly. Those strong levels of buying support have now turned to selling support, but it's really early days. This is a very, very strong move down and we'll look into why that could have occurred right now. The new Prime Minister of the UK, who comes from a financial background, pledges to lead Britain out of the economic crisis. Unloved, undervalued, UK stocks back in focus on Rishi Sunak's stability hopes. The stabilisation in the UK bond market is incredibly important. That could have caused financial contagion worldwide. This is why we saw the DXY losing ground and the other currencies strengthening. That's what the DXY is all about. And I do deep dives on the DXY inside the masterclass. In the last video, total crypto market cap was around this level, just above support. And what have we seen transpire in the next 24 hours? Crypto absolutely rallied on the back of the DXY falling. To gain an idea of how much market capitalization increased, it increased $56 billion in just the past 24 hours. 
you can see just how important it is to look outside the crypto market. And that's exactly why we do that. First of all, we mark up our charts with the CTKS method. These are the components of the masterclass. Next, we look out into the broader market. We track the DXY, gold, bonds, oil, everything. And then we look at the crypto market after that. On days like today, this method is proven out very significantly. But do we look into the crypto market and then just buy and sell? No, we don't. We have a step before that as well. That's positive excellence, mastery of emotional control and kicking out fear and installing courage as the guiding force of your decisions. How does this masterclass structure differ from other ways of looking at the crypto market? Very dramatically. What typically people do is they just mark up their charts with a, their own price story, not a scientific methodology. They create a self-fulfilling prophecy as to where they think things will go. We don't do that at all. We're all about probabilities and we don't create self-fulfilling prophecies because price is the reality. The majority of crypto technical analysis is focused on just looking at crypto and then trying to buy and sell off that. These three missing components make the difference between retail and professional. And the masterclass is designed to transfer 30 plus years of in-market experience. Now, what do we need to look at now? We know that Bitcoin's gravity pulls all of your beloved alts in its direction. 1% can escape momentarily, but they will be pulled in Bitcoin's direction absolutely over time. And we take advantage of that as crypto technical analysts. So what have we seen as the DXY crumbled? Bitcoin absolutely, utterly took off. And now when we look at the Stanfield levels, we can see that 20,208 is a strong sell level. This is an institutional sell level. What's an institutional buy level? <laughs> level 19,986. Bitcoin is currently $20,065. Is this where we stop? No way. We've got to look at the market structure. And remember, Stanfield levels are formed through the CTKS method version 2, coming soon to the masterclass. But version 1 gives you so much to work on already. The concept is that we have a very tight institutional sell level at 20,588 and one slightly above at 20,777. This means the price went up very, very fast and it encountered this overhead resistance, this sell pressure between 2588 and 2777. Because price came up so fast, it got rejected. And we can see that the futures on the S&P 500 are starting to come down. They're starting to gap down. And what do we also notice about the US government two year yield? It's actually overcoming a level of resistance. It's trying to encounter this very, very harsh level of resistance at 4.542. If it gets through this, if the yields start increasing, the dollar will go up and the markets will come down. We can see when we look at the NASDAQ, Bitcoin's gravity is following the NASDAQ. We can also see that the NASDAQ overcame a level of resistance. It's hit a smart money sell level and is currently 11,199. That institutional sell level was 11,205 and it literally pinged it and it retreated. Now, what are we seeing? We're seeing a lot of support below the NASDAQ's current price between 10.974 and 11.038. That means that the stock market may actually come down, but it's got a lot of support underneath it. That means the DXY may rally somewhat and then resume down. All of these things work in concert, literally, with each other. In around eight days, the Fed is expected to raise interest rates or the federal funds rate by 75 basis points and there's a 93.7% probability of doing so. 
Masterclass students, make sure you check LV24 for my shared chart here. What we can see is that the federal funds rate prediction for April 2023 is actually forming a series of upward price momentum moves, even though the yields have come down. This would tend to suggest that the federal funds rate is starting to increase and this could pull the yields around with it and also the DXY. So we could see a lot of inversion just happening in the short term. That's why I said in yesterday's episode, be careful. A lot of people when they're in crypto say, I don't want to look at the stock market. It's so boring. I have no interest in it. I hope that you can see just how important it is actually for the portfolio's profitability. It's so important to look at market conditions because yesterday we talked about Bitcoin and the max pain level on the 28th of October being $19,000. What is the max pain level today? It's actually moved to 19 and a half thousand. It's moved up to this point and actually there's more money going into it. Total options expirations on the 28th are $1.35 billion now. So from a statistical probability perspective, revisiting at least this 19 and a half thousand level would be definitely on the cards and it would actually coincide with this upward support that we've been seeing as well. Nothing to worry about. What we do as professionals, we always think about what would happen if things went against us first. When people first get into the market, they've got starry eyes. They only think of things going in their direction. And we just think that the majority of people typically go long. So that's the upward momentum. We don't do that. As you become more and more professional, you get more and more averse to losses. We can see Bitcoin on a weekly basis did in fact just charge through that resistance line. It was already over resistance here. It was starting to turn this to support, but under this level of resistance, and it broke through it at 19777. Bitcoin is currently $20,069. When we look at the longs and the shorts, we can see the shorts piling out of the market. They definitely got squeezed. They're starting to come back into the market just a little bit. And what do we see with the longs? The longs are losing a lot of confidence. They're coming out of the market as well. And why could this be the case? You, that's why I showed you all the news headlines. I want you to get an idea of retail market sentiment. And it is literally retail. It's not professional. And I say retail for a reason. Professionals look at the charts. They basically put the jigsaw puzzle together in real time. The news is always lagging. We can see over the past 24 hours, 805.91 million. That is a lot of liquidations. Now we're getting somewhere across 119,587 positions. And if you want not to be liquidated, you don't want to be a statistic because these are real people here. If you don't want to do that, just trade at spot. That's what we recommend until you become professional. And even then you don't need to do it. Let's have a look at total liquidations across the past 24 hours. There's been about, say, 88% short. What about the past 12 hours? 88% short again. What about the past four hours? 58% long, gone the other way. And what about the past hour? 77% long. And when we come down and look at who actually got whacked today, it was the shorts. The shorts absolutely got slaughtered. A lot of people say that investing and trading are two absolutely different mindsets. It's not true. All investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. So if you're an investor and you don't know how to trade, you're leaving money on the table. It's really good to trade because you can time market entries and exits more effectively. And let's have a look at Ethereum. What we're doing here is we understand no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So we're looking at this blue line to see convergence and divergence. When we see really, really weak projects, actually they often just pole vault back. And I'll show you right now. ADA was very much under Bitcoin's gravity. We talked about this for the past week. And then it slingshot back up 
to Bitcoin's gravity. When you've got a top project, they can sunbake and be weak for a long time, or they can be strong for a long time and then recalibrate with Bitcoin's gravity. You must be aware of this if you want to be professional and make money in the crypto market. So we can see as the DXY absolutely imploded and yields went down, what happened to crypto? It went up and the stock market went up. That's why it's so important to look outside the chart that you're looking at. There's a hundred charts influencing what Ethereum does. And what you do as a professional, you find those charts. So we can see Bitcoin in alignment, in Ethereum in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. We can also see BNB starting to rock and roll. This is what we want to see from BNB because it's an exchange token. It gives us an idea as to what the retail market is doing. And when we see ADA, fantastic. <laughs> it's so good to see ADA actually romping up. Well done, all the ADA holders. And we can see XRP not obeying Bitcoin's gravitational pull. There are a lot of sellers and they're pushing their money into other projects at the moment. That could turn around. And there's some really interesting news on Ethereum that I want to share with you very, very shortly. And we can see Solana just coming into alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. We can see the same thing with Doge. Dot that was weak is now becoming stronger. Look at how it just took out all of this supply here. Just unbelievable. When you look at cryptos, they do this all the time. They can be down, down, down. For example, let's look at ADA. It was down, down, down. And within the span of a week, it's up here. It's just incredible. Just these are the things that you need to know about crypto. It can turn around really, really quickly. And Matic, what a powerhouse. And we can see as Bitcoin comes up, the entire crypto market comes up with it. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Ton up 25.5%, ADA a little over 12%, Solana nearly 9%, Ethereum Classic over 8%, DOT over 8% as well, as is Ethereum. What are the greatest losers over the past 24 hours? Aptos down 8.41%. Clayton down 8.14%, Aave 3.15% down, Elron EGLD down 2.2%, and Quan just down 0.7%. We can see just how quickly the crypto market can turn around, and Tron up following Bitcoin's gravity, but still very much under the gravitational pull, relatively. And we can see SHIB following Bitcoin's gravity, but under. Uni just starting to align and ABAX just a little bit weaker. And we can see Clayton throwing some really interesting signals. Clayton came down as Bitcoin rallied. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this and how Clayton could be an offsetting factor, a counter mover. And please let me know what other counter movers have you seen? Mana is being pulled up with Bitcoin's gravity, but it's still really, really under. Think ADA. And what about Axie Infinity? Axie Infinity is way below Bitcoin's gravity, but it did put in a pretty nice pump. It was really interesting when we were discussing Axie. It was down around this particular point in the video, and then it just <laughs> just went up, which is fantastic. Because we actually understand the role that good projects play when they're very, very under gravity, they will eventually have to come up. It doesn't mean they come up the next day, which was what most people would be thinking. But a lot of people did really well on Axie. I'm just so happy for you. And we can see Quant starting to weaken. It's starting to actually lose a level of resistance. If you're in Quant, just be aware of this. Let's have a quick look at some crypto news. The incoming UK Prime Minister is pro-crypto. Wealthy crypto believer and incoming UK Prime Minister once commissioned a royal NFT. The new leader of the world's sixth largest economy is the former Chancellor of the Exchequer and is said to be richer than King Charles. He is also a firm crypto supporter. 
Western Union may be planning to expand its digital offerings far beyond remittances. Filecoin launches Web3 data storage solution for carbon offsets. Investors are loving SEC's crypto industry crackdown survey. Oh, please give me a break. This was actually borrowed from a Bloomberg article. Crypto is more attractive as SEC gets aggressive, investors say. And you may have seen this little chart just floating around the universe. For example, on Finbold, finance in bold. Now, what was that news about Ethereum? CFTC chair says Ethereum is a commodity. The chair of the CFTC said, I've suggested Ether is a commodity and Chair Gensler thinks otherwise. In other news, Fidelity ramps up crypto division by 25% or around 100 employees. Hong Kong and Singapore's mega rich are eyeing in crypto investments, says KPMG. Solana aims for moonshots with its groundbreaking smartphone disrupting Google and Apple. And they're expecting sales between 25 to 50,000 units next year. So you can see crypto is encroaching on the real world. Tel Aviv stock exchange to create crypto platform. And recently, Aave now listed by stock brokerage giant Robinhood. Ethereum killer, Tezos, XTZ, now supported by Robinhood as well. Nesten migrates to IOTEX to build the world's largest Web3 wireless network. FTX CEO says that adding Spot Cardano ADA pair is on the roadmap. Good on you, Sam. And what could Elon be up to? Twitter developing its own crypto wallet. And FTX is raising fresh cash in part for acquisitions. Sam is at it again. And Elon Musk could buy Twitter this week. Here's what to know ahead of the key deadline. One thing to note, once the deal is completed, Twitter will be a private company and its shares will stop trading immediately. And what does this actually mean? Twitter won't be required to report its financial information to the SEC. Take that, Gary. Globally, the news has been pretty awful because we've had so many awful statistics reported recently. And in a couple of days, the US's advanced GDP quarter on quarter will be coming out. That will be really interesting to see. One thing that's really important, as you gain more and more knowledge, you can move out of Zone 1 and Zone 2 into Zone 3 and Zone 4. Zone 1 and Zone 2 are the retail zones. Zone 3 and Zone 4 are the professional zones. In Zones 1 and Zones 2, everybody wants to ride the absolute low and the absolute high and pick up every single benefit in the market. This is just not possible to do. And hopefully today, you've seen just how important this second stage is inside your, well, inside the masterclass, but inside your concept of how you look at the market. Inside the masterclass, I'm always releasing new LV videos, their living videos, to keep you updated with what's happening inside the market. And I created the CTKS method to help people understand how crypto moves. And version 2 will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. In the comments yesterday, I asked for people to reach out if they're just sort of on the sidelines and they're watching but they don't comment. And... Rashidul Islam reached out and said hi. It's really nice to, for people to say hi. Hi, my friend. And DJ Fresh Prince also reached out. One thing that a lot of other communities don't talk about is the role of fear when it comes to making buy and sell decisions. Inside the masterclass, this is actually a whole area called positive excellence or real wealth. It's important to have this mastery of fear and emotional control before you buy or sell. Just like it's really important to look at the outside markets before you look at crypto. And what DJ said is just excellent. Fear is the most negative force amongst us. It will come at us in many forms at any time and at any place. It depends on ourselves on how to react when fear attacks or how to respond when it knocks us down. 
as you find that inner strength, that confidence to apply that positive mindset, you can destroy fear itself. Then courage is rewarded after conquering fear and courage will take you to the next level. DJ, I'm so glad you said hi and you're sharing your views. It's just beautiful. DJ also said, we have to destroy negativity with gratitude. Be thankful for everything in our lives. We cannot be blessed with abundance if we're not thankful for the smallest or simplest things we have already. Just brilliant and thanks so much for sharing. If you have family or friends who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. And if you've been sitting on the signed lines as well, please just reach out and say hi. We'd love to say hi back. The fastest way into positive excellence is through the CTKS Creed. The Creed is a series of positive affirmations that you say to yourself each and every day. Those affirmations are all about getting rid of fear and taking up courage. And it's really difficult to be courageous if you think the world is against you. So that's why the first line in the CTKS Creed is, I know the universe wants me to succeed because it does. To keep away from zone one and zone two behaviors, line two comes in. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. Zone one and zone two always has the thought, oh no, I missed it, it won't come again. That's why we have line three. I know opportunities and life reset daily. Self-doubt and self-sabotage are two of your most powerful enemies in life. Self-doubt is like, I can't do this. Self-sabotage is like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Oh no, I'm, I'm not worthy. I need to mess this up. That's why we have line four. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. Many people want to become CEO when they just walk in the door of their new job at the ground floor. This doesn't happen. You need to work your way up slowly and prove yourself. That's why going slow is going fast. Also, a lot of people say in zone one and zone two, I have to take on leverage. I simply don't have enough money. I just won't get there fast enough. After all, I want a Lamborghini and I want it tomorrow. Also, a lot of people are in a dying hurry to increase the size of their accounts and they don't have the required knowledge or experience. They've not timed the markets. So that's why line five, I start small and scale with Borsog. Borsog is buy on red, sell on green. You're actually making a loss when you buy and a lot of zone ones and zone twos can never go there. But as you saw, Axie yesterday, you need to actually buy and Clayton three days before that. If you're buying, you're getting on the right side of the percentage. You can be on the wrong side of the trade and on the right side of the percentage and you'll do really, really well. Setbacks in life are very common, but life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally, which is the next line of the CTKS Creed. And if you know life happens for you, not to you, you have a completely different attitude as to setbacks in life. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. They're probably the two most valuable lines in the whole CTKS Creed. If you learned something new today, please just pop a comment on what that may have been. We'd love to read those and we'd love the fact that you're sharing with our global KS family. You're a part of our family and we love you being here. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.